you think about AI, you may be thinking about all kinds of things, but how about the supply chain, getting things from point A to point B in the most efficient way, in a way that we never thought about. Andrew Sopko's with us, founder, CEO, Brookfield and Sequoia-backed supply chain technology company, Batch. I'm sure we'll be hearing more about this. Um, not publicly traded yet, but that is um, obviously being talked about. Nice to see you, Andrew. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. So this is a name that in the past we've talked about. You have um, Walmart, Target, Home Depot. You're working with them. You're working with truckers, getting those lanes digitized so they can find the most efficient ways. And even more so, you have this global footprint. And that's sort of where we are. I mean, growing exponentially, I guess. You tell us, where, where are we now? Yeah, so think about it, you know, managing global supply chains, it's like managing a huge game of chess. Just with more players, more people involved, it's a way bigger space and more ways to win, and in some cases lose. So we're trying to help our clients to make next best decision. What's your next best move? How can we help you by digitizing the world? How can we apply AI? Instead of just having hundreds of very smart people analyzing data, how can we help you make decisions on a daily basis and take less pressure on individuals? And in some cases, you can make an argument you know, through the labor might, you might not need hundreds of people analyzing the data. You might just have AI helping you make those decisions. Right, and you have a new administration which also can bring in pros or cons. I don't know, you tell me. I mean, is it making things easier? Are you setting the company up in a certain way um, for the next few years? So we're definitely thinking a lot around tariffs. And some of our clients have factories or they're buying from suppliers in different countries. We think in how can we help our clients and drive some sort of alerts through AI? Potentially, hey, you have exposure to China or Taiwan or this different country. We're trying to help them to think about it and understand the risk way better than and they AI are right now. And AI can help them do that. Absolutely. I mean, they can then say, look, this has a lot of tariffs here. This has less tariffs here. I'm going to put this, you know what I mean? And at, like you said, a game of chess. Um, and when we talk about the jobs picture, maybe some jobs will be created for AI, but some jobs will also be taken by AI, right? Yeah, so people talk a lot about AI will take a lot of jobs. My belief is, you know, you can actually create, you know, thousands of jobs by, by training people and coaching people how to use AI properly. You know, we see it a lot with ChatGPT, some well-known hedge funds, all of their employees using ChatGPT very, uh, very you know, effectively. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there are a lot of conversation about large language models. We are big believers in the small language models. It requires less GPUs, and then you can just focus on applying your GPU power towards more solutions, more optimization, in our particular case, more optimization on our supply chain. Right, I mean, ultimately, it should help the bottom line, right? We talk about AI monetization, but really, when you're running a company, you want AI to help you and make more money with your company. You know, cut your costs and streamline and be more efficient. Are you using AI daily in your life, either personally and clearly for the company? Yes, right? Look, I'm a big believer. I personally switched completely from probably Googling stuff to ChatGPT which is pretty interesting. Um, so I'm a big believer. Again, so it's easier. So you use chat GPT already? Today. Yeah, instead of like searching whenever I have any simple question or I want to search something, I just ask chat GPT quickly mm -hmm. to my app. It's way more efficient. Right, and you're finding that. Um, and your team, do you recommend to them to use AI regularly too? Yeah, absolutely. But our company, just to give a little bit of background, you know, we've been probably one of the first movers in AI probably looking back six, seven years ago when we started. You know, in the company batch, we already have over 200 million cash invested in our technology stack. And we have actual use cases and solutions, how we actually solve the problem. But specifically, where I'm so enthusiastic, in the last six months, we see the most progress made in the industry. In some cases, you know, we see like whenever our truck drivers use our app in major ports like California, which is the most complicated, biggest port in the country, we improve drivers' productivity 50% plus, mm. which is massive. We're right. talking instead of doing two trips and getting stuck in the traffic and getting dealing with a lot of different issues, you solve through the app, through AI, we have a tool called Smart Jobbing. Right. You solve the problem. You solve the problem for the port and you make drivers way more efficient and they make more money. <laughs> and Simple you have that. thousands of truck drivers using your app, right? Correct. Yeah. Do they have to pay for this app? No. We basically operate as a marketplace. Mm -hmm. Our core business is a marketplace. We became, let's say, the one of the largest clients for those truck drivers, independent truck drivers that use our app and they get business from us. Are there ads on the app? 
There are no ads. So you're not making money on the no, app. No. Uh, that's sort of a marketplace, a service, and helping, I guess, logistically get things from point A to point B. I mean, when you have the data and everything that you need, um, it moves everything more quickly. Tell me about your office space. I read that you were expanding even your office space because you needed to do so. Yeah, we just expanded our headquarters in Chicago to a beautiful office, which was a former uh, headquarters for another private, publicly held company, public company in, our, in a different space. Uh, we are expanding in Jacksonville, Florida, where we have significant footprint, and also Los Angeles. Do you need to be anywhere else? I mean, you have coast to coast pretty much. We have coast to coast. We're, again, seriously paying attention to, again, global supply chains and global logistics management. So we are putting our eyes on expanding some and opening up offices in Europe and potentially Asia and Middle East. Uh, that's the order? Would yes. that be the order? Yeah. Um, just I'll give you the final thought, maybe something I didn't ask because you have the opportunity now. You may be public, you're moving into a publicly traded building, you know, it was formerly by a publicly traded company. Um, are you feeling like now is the time to go public? I mean, this is your time to shine for Batch? Look, it's a, it's a complicated question. Uh, we'll make some announcements hopefully very soon, but we are, again, we're very bullish on the public markets. Right. Today, as a and company. not worried about the economy. Uh, we're paying attention. We're, of course, paying attention to the economy and stage of the economy. But we feel like you know the floodgates was going to open up. There's again a big line of companies trying to go public. Right. And uh, so we've been very hopeful. We can. It's nice to same. meet you, Andrew. Andrew Sopko. I know you were here. You were talking to um, Peter Tuckman in the past, and so um, you represent your you precede yourself. Your reputation precedes yourself. So it's good to meet you in person. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having and me. And when you go public, you'll be right back here at the desk with me, I hope. Let's do it. I hope so we can talk more about that. Um, but good luck and um, may the floodgates open and lots of business for you. It's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. That's Andrew Sopko, CEO of Batch.